Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, The Legit Astrologer. My name is Rajat Kapoor. In my channel, I make videos on Vedic astrology, the upcoming transits most importantly, and I continue to make videos on the upcoming transits of 2024. In case you're new to my channel, please subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you can keep yourself up to date with all the upcoming transit videos and concepts related to Vedic astrology as I continue to make interesting transit videos for you and in the recent series, I have made a video on 2024 predictions for all 12 ascendant signs or the moon signs. You can check out that video on my YouTube channel. And I continue to make monthly predictions as well for all the ascendant signs as well as moon signs. Very recently, I have made a video on the predictions for the month of March. And I will also make the prediction video for the month of April in the coming days. So this video is about the upcoming great conjunction of Saturn and Mars. To make things simple for you, I'm going to present my screen and I'm going to share with you some interesting aspects about this conjunction that could be never heard before. And I have tried to make things very simple here. Now, let's understand Saturn and Mars and when they can join. So before I talk about this great conjunction of 2024, in my opinion, this is one of the most significant conjunctions of this year because both Saturn as well as Mars play a very important role in our life. Mars is all about energy. It is a fiery planet. It rules the element of fire. It is the natural ruler of the sign of Aries and the sign of Scorpio, the natural first house and the eighth house of the zodiac belt. Therefore, it plays a very important role in our vitality. This is where we get energy from. Mars is the commander of the army. It is the significator of energy. It represents younger siblings as well. Mars at a mundane level or mangal, which means auspicious. It is the ruler of all things that we do, which require effort, which require a start or the beginning. In order to carry our day-to-day -day lives, Mars or Mangal plays a very important role in our life. Saturn, on the other hand, is the natural ruler of the sign of Capricorn and Aquarius, which are the natural 10th and the 11th house of the zodiac belt. And therefore, Saturn plays a very important role as well because it rules two important houses. It rules the highest kendra. It is the Karam Karak. Saturn is all about discipline. It is about work. Things that we do in order to sustain, survive in this world. All the labor class is associated to Saturn. Therefore, they have a stock difference. Firstly, Saturn is air element. Mars is fire element. Saturn represents the working and the labor class. Mars represents the army. Therefore, there's a huge difference as far as their significations are concerned, as far as what they really mean to this world. And if I look at this way, that Saturn and Mars come together once every approximately two years. So last time they were conjoined around April in the sign of Capricorn, towards the last degrees of Capricorn. That's when the conjunction was. And prior to that, they were conjoined in 2020. Thankfully, this time the conjunction is happening in the sign of Aquarius, because previously when they were conjoined, Mars had a greater say because Mars was exalted in the sign of Capricorn. They don't share a very comfortable relationship with each other. Mars and Saturn are like enemies. And the reason for this is because Mars is the planet that likes to beat Saturn. If you try to understand in a very logical and simple manner, Mars gets exalted in the sign of Saturn, which is Capricorn. Saturn gets debilitated in the sign of Mars, which is Aries. Therefore, Mars is the one that likes to beat Saturn. But thankfully, this time, this conjunction is happening in the sign of Aquarius, and it is happening in the nakshatra of Purva Bhadrapad, which is ruled by Jupiter. And Saturn is also aspecting Jupiter. That means that Saturn is in great strength, during this conjunction and has a greater say. So therefore, I do not expect very severe ill effects compared to the conjunction that happened 30 years ago, which was in 1994. So I'm going to put some statistics in place. I'm going to share some insights and make some predictions in a general sense for the world. And at the same time, in my April video, I'm going to make a special video for prediction for all ascendant signs and the moon signs in my April prediction video and how this will play a role. But for now, let's understand this great conjunction of 2024. Let me take you back to 1994 when this conjunction happened on 14th of March in 1994. Now, this time was the one when Saturn and Mars came together 
in the sign of Aquarius. They were in a different nakshatra. They both were in Shatabisha nakshatra at that point in time, which is ruled by Rahu. And if you look at a differentiating factor, which I will also present to you, is that during that time, Saturn and Mars were conjoined with two other planets. Sun, which was towards the last degrees of Aquarius, as it was making a transit to Pisces, and Mercury, which had entered the sign of Aquarius. So this was the kind of conjunction that was in existence 30 years ago. Now, if we try and understand the aspect here, they both were in the sign of Aquarius and conjoined two other planets, Sun and Mercury. So this was a complex conjunction of four planets. And at the same time, if I talk about the nakshatra lord Rahu, who rules Shatabisha nakshatra, this nakshatra lord was in the sign of Scorpio. Rahu is said to be debilitated in the sign of Scorpio. Now, if I count the houses, this is the 10th house. So Rahu was square from this conjunction. That means it had greater influence as far as all the negative matters are concerned. Therefore, in 1994, we saw some very dreadful events and uh, things related to you know, violence, genocide, uh, political upliftment, uh, certain disturbances, uh, a lot of uh, you know air-related incidents uh, also happened around 994. Okay, now this conjunction was also aspected by Jupiter by the fifth aspect, and Jupiter really expands everything, whether it is positive, negative, that is there. It really expands all those significations that might persist there. So this was more or less what happened in. 1994. Now, let's try to understand, okay, as to what is happening in the current time. Now, in 2024, this great conjunction is coming together in Aquarius. It will happen on 10th and 11th of April 2024, depending on your geographical location. So, I have taken Dubai, where I live, as the point, and in Dubai, it is happening around the midnight, which is on 11th of April, just a few minutes past midnight, when Mars and Saturn will come at the exact same degree in the sign of Aquarius. How this is different from the last conjunction that happened about 30 years ago, this time they're coming together in Puru Bhadrapad Nakshatra, which is ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter is going strong in the sign of Aries. And during the conjunction, Jupiter and Moon are together at that time, forming a very powerful Gajakesari Yoga, which also should be taken into account. Okay, so that is how it is different. And if you look at this conjunction, there isn't any aspect that is there on Mars and Saturn there on its own. Saturn is in its Multricone sign. Mars is out of its exaltation sign now in the sign of Aquarius. Saturn has a greater say. Saturn is also aspecting the Nakshatra Lord, that is Jupiter by its third aspect. So it holds a greater influence and I am quite pleased with it. There are a lot of videos spreading around some very harsh negative events. I do expect some negative events to happen, some positive events to happen as well, but the intensity of these events will not be so severe as it was in 1994. Let's take a look at quick comparison between 1994 and 2024 conjunction of Saturn and Mars. In 1994, as I mentioned, they were conjoined Sun and Mercury as well. They were being expected by Jupiter, which is a significator of expansion. Both were in Rahu's nakshatra, Shatabisha. Therefore, there were very strong energies of all kinds and very, very high and severe negative energies between March through June of 1994. Nakshatra Lord was debilitated in the sign of Scorpio and the sign of Aquarius had complex four planetary conjunction that was in existence at that point in time and Rahu being square which is 10th from this particular house. Aquarius as a sign, let's talk about that too while I say it is a very karmic sign. Now why is it a karmic sign? We say that both Scorpio and Aquarius are karmic signs. The reason for this is Aquarius has a dual lordship, similar to Scorpio. Aquarius is co-ruled by Saturn and also Rahu. Therefore, at that point in time, it was very severe because the co-ruler of Aquarius was debilitated and at the same time, it was square from its own house. This time around, Rahu, which is the co-ruler of Aquarius, 
is in Pisces. It is conjoined Venus, Sun and Mercury during this time. So there's a heavy influence as far as Rahu's matters are concerned. And it is second from Aquarius. So therefore, I do not anticipate any sort of ill effects that Rahu brings in. But this is one reason why Aquarius is known to be as one of the most karmic signs because of co-rulership and same goes for Scorpio which is co-ruled by Mars as well as Ketu. In 2024, there is no other aspect or conjunction that is there on Mars and Saturn. Jupiter's nakshatra which is Puru Bhadrapad, this nakshatra lord is very nicely disposed, going pretty strong in the sign of Aries. It is in its last leg for the next few days, weeks in Aries and it is forming a Gajakesari Yoga, a very nice Gajakesari Yoga on the day of this exact conjunction when Mars and Saturn are in a warlike situation. Nakshatra Lord is also aspected by Saturn. Hence, Saturn here gains an authority. The only caveat is that in Navamsha during this time, Saturn and Mars are in the sign of Aries, where Saturn gets debilitated and is the own sign of Mars. So that is the only negative aspect. Otherwise, Saturn does gain more strength, more influence during this transit. So therefore, it is a better transit compared to 1994. Let's talk about some global events that I'd like to predict over the next couple of months, what could happen possibly in this world. And in my next video, which will be about April prediction, I'm going to talk about each and every ascendant as well. So some prediction of events that I'd like to make today, okay, during this video. And I hope and feel that you know, most of these predictions, if there's any negative predictions that I'm making today, I hope and feel that it should not be true and it, its intensity should be on a lower side. Now, there are a couple of global wars that are happening at the same time, which we are all aware of. Russia is having a war with Ukraine. There's a conflict between Israel and Palestine, where there are Israeli forces in Gaza. There's a war that is being fought. In May 1994, there was a near similar situation, which resulted in withdrawal of Israeli forces, followed by a transfer of authority to Palestinians. So that happened a few weeks after this conjunction was likely into picture. A likely solution based on that analysis would occur between April to June. By the virtue of involvement of the countries or the influence of some other countries or powers uh, that exist globally today. Now, there will definitely be a delay in withdrawal of these forces because Saturn is pretty strong. So Saturn is stronger than Mars in this conjunction. I anticipate that certain army in the world are likely to you know, either make bad decisions or are likely to suffer. So there could be delay in terms of withdrawal of these forces. But I do anticipate a solution to this ongoing conflict before or around June. So between April to June, there could be a resolution. On the other side, based on some geopolitical analysis and understanding from the past, from a regional point of view, where there could be more tensions, I do expect intensification of the Russia-Ukraine war with uh, limited support from the Western allies or the Western forces. So that could be detrimental uh, you know, to Ukraine. And I hope that it does not uh, you know, last long or it is not too significant. But this is something I anticipate based on certain astrological calculations uh, at this point in time and the condition of other grahas that are there. Okay, Let's try and also understand what some other events uh, globally could occur during this time. What's happening in Asia Pacific? Okay, so around 1994, there was also some sort of geopolitical uh, decisions, changes that happened in some of the Southeast Asian uh, countries, particularly Japan, Malaysia. Um, they were you know, leaders who stepped down and it was a very sudden decision. So there could be a loss of leader uh, within the Southeast Asia Pacific uh, region. And I anticipate that this could be most likely for someone stepping down. And particularly, I think this is the region or the belt where certain changes would happen. So China, Korea, Japan, uh, you know, Philippines, uh, Malaysia, um, you know, some of these countries, uh, even Indonesia. Uh, so there could be likely some change or stepping down of a key leader, certain even Myanmar and Thailand as well. So that could be taken into account. Okay, so that is pretty much likely at this point in time. On the other side, I also believe that uh, there could be a conflict. Uh, uh, at the Western Asian region, which is this region, Afghanistan, Iran, and the surrounding uh, you know, region. 
somewhat here. There could be a conflict between two nations. Uh, this could very well happen between April through July. So these are the four months where there could be a severe to, to normal conflicting situation, more like a warlike situation. I hope that it's not too intense and it does not last very long, uh, but this is quite uh, likely. So let's see how the events uh, unfold. Um, let's understand what's happening in the European region. Uh, so what happened in 1994 was that some of the European countries recorded a severe increase in temperature at that point in time. So I do expect an unprecedented heat wave and increase in temperatures in the European region, which could be record breaking. It can break all records. So April, May, within these months, we might see a massive increase in temperatures. So take care of it. If you live in that region, stay hydrated. Uh, and towards the end of this video, I'm also going to talk about remedies. What are the potential remedies to minimize the ill effects of this transit? Now, I also understand that there could be certain incident involving air travel. Okay, because during the conjunction, Venus, who is the significator of air travel, is conjoined Rahu. It is in its exaltation sign, but uh, at the same time, it is conjoined with Rahu during this time. So there could be an air-related incident. Um, I hope that it is not prominent, or there could be some incident uh, at one of the prominent airports. And this is, again, an understanding of what happened in the past. In the past, there were a number of events, if you look at the events uh, you know, in that year. Uh, but now, I do not expect it to be so severe. But just maintain caution as you're traveling. And of course, uh, you know, plan accordingly is what I would advise and take the necessary, uh, you know, precautions uh, during this time. Okay, let's understand in the African region what's happening. So April of 1994, soon after this conjunction, witnessed one of the biggest and unfortunate genocide in the modern human history in Rwanda. This genocide killed anywhere between 800,000 to a million people. It was one of the most horrific and dreadful, and I have no words to explain this incident. It's available everywhere uh, you know, in the news. Um, so it was one of the most unfortunate incidents uh, in the modern human history that occurred in the African region and in the, the small country of Rwanda. Now, between April and May, we might expect some sort of terrorist attack or another air travel related incident between the central and southern African region. Uh, this could be quite likely post 11th of April. So within the next uh, you know couple of months from that, um, I hope and feel that it is not that severe. But for us, it is important to maintain utmost caution and while going to any public places, uh, just be careful of things. I do not expect uh, you know, any sort of uh, big case of, of genocide compared to what happened in April 1994, because the situation was much severe based on some of the principles and conjunctions that I have shared with you. Uh, but then there's likely uh, to, you know, there could be some unfortunate uh, events uh, or, or most likely a terrorist uh, attack or uh, an air or any travel related incident. It could be on train as well. So that is quite likely uh, within Central and Southern African region. So utmost caution that we must demonstrate. Uh, now also let's understand on a positive side what's going to happen. There could be a breakthrough in space technology and space research between April to August 2024 in the outer space. Some of the most interesting elements or discoveries could be made that uh, would be very pivotal for the human history, for mankind, for science in general. Uh, and that is something I can very well predict by the virtue of this conjunction, because Aquarius rules science, Aquarius rules technology. And, um, you know, Mars and Saturn coming together in this sign will give an unprecedented boost to the tech space, to the technology space, whether it is artificial intelligence and particularly for space research. Either there could be some breakthrough missions that some of the countries will decide to do in April, between April to August 2024, which will be quite audacious in nature, which would be considered as a very big decision, very bold decision, uh, and that could commence over the next few years. So a breakthrough discovery Maybe we might end up discovering uh, an interesting uh, you know, outer exoplanet or 
um, you know, one of the technologies that will come in play, which would be good for the mankind for our overall benefit is something which I can very well predict is likely to happen more on a positive side. And in my experience, I have seen people with Mars and Saturn's conjunction naturally have an affinity towards technology, towards the tech space. They might not be scientists or technology experts, but they're very good with uh, you know gadgets and, and, and phones and, and systems and uh, you know, in terms of troubleshooting things. And um, there are some very strong and powerful charts with this conjunction because, you know, it is complex at the same time, but it does give the power of labor and energy to an individual. Therefore, I consider this as a, as a yoga. And at the same time, there is uh, nothing much to fear. Of course, there would be some geopolitical tensions and events uh, that could very well be there. But there are significant developments as well, which I am predicting in this video. Now, most importantly, what is that we must do in order to minimize any ill effects of Mars and Saturn conjunction in 2024? Now, there's a very simple remedy that is there. That remedy is Hanuman Chalisa. Lord Hanuman is the only deity that can channelize, I would not say control, but channelize both Mars and Saturn. This is based on history. Mars is uh, the deity, the Ishtadevata associated with Mars. One of the Ishtadevatas is Hanuman. And Saturn is the one who listens to Hanuman, who takes his advice and his direction and guidance. So therefore, chanting Hanuman Chalisa is the ultimate remedy to minimize any ill effects of Saturn and Mars conjunction. If you feel that is there. I advise, based on my understanding, that Hanuman Chalisa should be read seven times. It is mentioned in Hanuman Chalisa itself. It is mentioned in Hanuman Chalisa itself that we should read it seven times. If you cannot read it seven times every day, I would advise in the month of April and May, all the Tuesdays and Saturdays of April and May, which is ruled by Mars and Saturn respectively, as far as the day is concerned, try to read it seven times. It will take you about 30 minutes if you read it seven times, and that's the kind of time which you can take out. The other remedy, which is again common for all, since Saturn and Mars both are in Jupiter's nakshatra, which is Puro Bhadrapad nakshatra, and the deity, the Lord, which is closely associated to Jupiter, is Shiva. And the mantra is very simple, which you can chant to avoid any ill effects. And you do it 108 times. Either you do it 108 times or you just chant it for 5 to 10 minutes every day. It is Om Sada Shivaya Namah. This is a simple mantra which you can chant. The other mantra, which is a Veda Vyasa, Raksha Kavash Mantra. It is for protection. It goes like Om Jumsa. Vyama Veda Vyasaya Sa Jum Om. So this is a protective mantra because this mantra is covered by Om on both sides. So you can chant it every morning either for 108 times or you could do it for 10 minutes without a count for your own protection and gaining mental strength. So this is about Mars and Saturn's great conjunction of 2024. I hope and believe that it does bring a lot of positive aspects to individuals as well in terms of bringing that discipline and energy together that we can apply and put in our everyday work life and this conjunction to be fruitful for most people. Other than that, take care of some of the global events and things that I have mentioned in this video and stay tuned for my video that will come out in the next couple of weeks on April's prediction where I will specifically talk about how this conjunction will have an impact on all 12 ascendant signs and the moon signs and remedies specifically that we must do to gain most from this conjunction and avoid any kind of ill effects from this conjunction. Thank you very much and God bless you all.